People are going crazy with my comments on Diet Coke, soda. Let's face it, this stuff just doesn't work. It makes you hungry. <laughs> now, now he's, he's uh, that was the face he pulled as he sent the tweet. So, my proposition to you is if you can understand Diet Coke and how it interacts with your body, then you're a long way into understanding what ultra-processed food is. This is Diet Coke labelling from the United Kingdom, but this is more or less how it's marketed around the world. This, is, this gets four green traffic lights on the bottle. So this isn't just a health food. This is the healthiest product you can possibly buy. Very few um, uh, foods get, get four green traffic lights. It's a sparkling, low-calorie soft drink with vegetable extracts with sweeteners. Let's read the ingredients. Carbonated water, fine. Now, caramel E150D might make you think of creme brulee, of traditional treats, of, of 19th century French cooking. Uh, in fact, uh, it, it has nothing to do with caramel. It's carbohydrate uh, being put through a set of industrial processes using uh, chemical modifications with acids, alkalis, and, and heat. Um, it contains ammonia, it contains sulfites, and you can read more about it on the WHO uh, uh, Committee on Food Additives website. There are sweeteners, aspartame and acesulfame K. Now, aspartame hit the headlines recently because of concerns that it seems to be carcinogenic. There's some nuance about that. I'm not very concerned about its carcinogenic properties. Much more important was a very significant paper published in one of the world's leading scientific journals this summer, Cell, and it was an analysis of what the, the non-nutritive, or we call them artificial, but the, the natural ones uh, do the same thing, is what non-nutritive sweeteners do to our health. So we now think, that if you look at the independent studies, the non-industry funded ones, there is something that seems to be really tricky for the body. When you put sweet taste on the tongue, which you haven't just evolved for fun, right? We, we've really evolved a sophisticated internal system for detecting what food does. So when you taste sweetness on your tongue, it prepares your body to receive sugar, to receive refined carbohydrates. And humans have been eating significant quantities of refined carbohydrates for many, many millennia. When that sugar doesn't arrive, it seems to cause problems. So people used to think that the problem was that you released insulin, and that dropped your blood glucose, because insulin lowers blood glucose, and that made you hungry, and you then went and ate more carbohydrates. And that might be why they don't seem to promote uh, weight loss. It seems now, from the research this summer, that a lot of them actually increase your blood glucose. And we're not really sure why that is. It may be part of a stress response. The brain is a prediction engine. It's constantly making predictions about the world. And when you get a mismatch between a prediction, like sugar is on its way and the sugar doesn't arrive, there may be a stress response. No one really knows, but the artificial sweeteners, according to the World Health Organization, and I think the best evidence, don't seem to be metabolically superior to sugar, and they don't seem to be linked to significant weight loss. And that is a huge problem. There are natural flavorings, including caffeine. I mean, I would frame caffeine as an addictive stimulant, but, you know, whatever you like. There's phosphoric acid. Now, it's particularly significant for the uh, people born women in the audience. Phosphoric acid doesn't just dissolve your teeth. It can also leach minerals out of your bones and reduce bone density. And citric acid will also uh, dissolve your teeth. This is not a healthy product. It will not help anyone lose weight. Uh, it is a way of commodifying ill health, I would frame it as.